This is the MLW Radio Network. This is the Mind of the Meanie. Here are your hosts, the Blue Meanie and Adam Barnard. Peace world and welcome everybody to the Mind of the Meanie, your weekly peek into the world according to former WWE superstar and ECW original, the Blue Meanie. We'll cover wrestling, music, movies, sports, and lots and lots of useless knowledge all contained in the Mind of the Meanie. I'm your tour guide, Adam Bernard, and he is the Blue Meanie. Meanie, first of all, Happy New Year. And second of all, what's on your mind, brother? Oh, well, that's exactly why I wanted to say is Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year to all the folks listening at home or abroad, wherever you're going. Hopefully, we're your travel companion as you're uh, traveling around this uh, post-New Year's Monday. Uh, But yeah, man, uh, we had a couple uh, weeks off there. We did the uh, pre-recorded Ask Meanie so we can... uh, you know, have a little bit of holiday time, mm-hmm. and uh, the holidays were great. And uh, here we are, ready to record. How was you? How was your holiday, my friend? Oh man, it was fabulous. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it. It was uh, it was relaxing, man. Like I said, I met a couple times. I mentioned I'm uh, I'm off this week uh, from work. I did absolutely fucking nothing, man. My house looks atrocious. We've had you know <laughs> we've had company over, but we're like fuck it, whatever. You know, as long as the bathrooms are clean and we have food, we don't care. Uh, but yeah. it's been nice, man. No, it was uh, it was very relaxing. It was drama free, exactly how we wanted it. So I'm hoping uh, hoping the same for you, kind sir, uh, and everything yeah. as well with you. Well, I mean, yeah, we're we're good. Uh, where we left off, uh, we did the Icons convention mm-hmm. two weeks yep. ago, which was which was great. You were there, uh, Miss Mina was there. The, uh, the a lot of the uh, ECW alumni was there, so it was, it was like a mini uh, high school reunion, which was great. Yeah, always good to see uh, my fellow ECW uh, brethren and sister sisters uh, there at the ECW arena. And then uh, I did something that night for Battleground Championship Wrestling. Um, Meanie Claus made a, an appearance after uh, the main event and came out and handed out some gifts. Which was fun. Uh, what wasn't fun is, uh, you know, got a little, uh, sick. Yeah. Well, after, uh, the convention, you know, you know, I mean, you're there, like, we're there, like, 8 30 in the morning to, like, midnight. So it's, like, all day. You know, you get tired, your body gets worn down, and it's, you know, probably a big old germ factory. So, you know, Mrs. Meany got, uh, sick. So, uh, we were going to travel up to Connecticut for a little bit, but we decided to, we, we nixed that and had a, you know, holiday to ourselves. And, uh, it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, we miss our family and, and stuff like that, but you know, um, for what it was, you know, it was, it was, it was a chill, nice chilled out Christmas, uh, Mrs. Meany, uh, you know, like her, the the things she's been doing, I I love over the holidays. Making a nice little spread of like little things you could pick, you know, little foods you could pick, and uh, you know, snack on, and you know, we watch movies, watch TV, and stuff like that. So, um, and that's why we're going to be doing this. Uh, well, I know we're we taped this. It's what you did before. yesterday, and today. yeah, what we did yes, yeah, what we did yesterday. Wink, wink. Is uh, have a nice little uh, spread. And, uh, just enjoy each other's company. Um, my main goal for tomorrow, which is New Year's Eve. Yeah, I know. Okay. You're listening to money, but, uh, New Year's Eve is to, uh, get up as early as possible and move my car onto my street for New Year's Day. Because for those not in Philadelphia or used to Philadelphia, uh, New Year's Day is like a huge holiday here in Philly. We have our own, uh, uh, well, New Year's Day, we have our uh, Mummer's Day Parade, which mm. is, uh, and where I live in South Philly, uh, the parade goes up Broad Street, right? So, oh, yeah. You're not from Philly. Broad Street's our main street. I've talked about it all the time. Anytime, like, there's a big sporting event and one of the sports teams does good, everybody goes down to Broad Street and celebrate. Mm-hmm. So the parade goes from South Philly all the way north up to City Hall, wraps around, goes down Market Street goes over Market Street East 
and then shoots back down on Third Street. Well, right. third and second, you know, it's, you know, the two streeters. Yep, I was just, I was just gonna say the two streeters. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I'm right in that area. So if I don't fucking park my car tomorrow and leave it on my street, I ain't parking it fucking anywhere yep. because everybody from every part of Philadelphia is going to be parking on our streets and pissing up our alleys. You know, this, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a fucking, it's going to be a, a Delaware river of piss on two yeah. street this weekend. Dude, uh, uh, I have family that lived on 13th Street, which is like the block over from Broad Street. And yeah. then, uh, this is like 1988, you know, and, um, you know, I wish I still had it, but like I had my camcorder, I'm looking out my, my uncle's window recording and there's like a row of 20 bums up against the back of Southern High School just pissing against the wall. <laughs> and it, I, like, I wish I would have still had it because that would have been like a, a great like Christmas card, you know, or, you know. <laughs> Yo, yep. cuz, how's my, yo, cuz, how's my blush? <laughs> well, and, and for those from, not from Philly, there, there's different things that the mummers. There's the funny brigade, there's the string bands, all this stuff. And it's like these, you know, South Philly guys, yo, cuz, yo, bo. Yeah. Yo, yeah, cuz. cuz. Yo, I'll put on, I'll, I'll put on clown makeup. <laughs> and so it's just like, yo, cuz, how's my blush? You know? Which is going to be the name of this episode right now. I was right typing now. it out right now. Yep. <laughs> Yo, cuz, how's my blush? How's my blush? But, uh, yep, that's the one. Yeah, but New Year's is good. Like, uh, but like South Philly's fucking, like last year, uh, the parade got delayed a week, I guess, because of weather. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I, w I was coming home forgetting that the parade had been oh, moved. Oh, man. Um, dude. It, Legit in Philly, if you live in South Philly, you could spend a good two hours circling your neighborhood looking for a parking spot. Dude, let me, I came up later than expected at Icons because I went and got my hair cut at the, the fine people at Blue 52 Barbershop in Kennett Square. If you're in the area here, go check them out. Uh, yep, as, yep. For, as for Esther, she knows me. Uh, but anyway, I came up like an hour later and I was like, oh, this will be easy. Like it's in the morning. It's not terrible. You know, like my haircut, I think was at like 830. I was at my 930. I think I was up in Philly by like 1045. I drove around. Around the ECW arena looking for fucking parking for like probably, I don't know, half an hour before yeah. I actually was able to get in. And then when I found parking, it was like, it was beautiful because it was literally like, I came down the one street where the, the arena is on the right hand side. I don't remember the name of that yeah. road there, the little alleyway. And it, right as you pass underneath the bridge, there was a spot. Perfect size for my fusion. I fucking parallel parked that bitch in less than 10 seconds. I was like, this has to be. Like a, a sign from God that I was getting here, yeah. or at least from Gritty. I'm not sure. One of the two. Uh, well, what's funny is, um, like sometimes I'll be driving, I'll find a parking spot, and I'll park in it. I'll get in my house and go, man, that parking spot was too easy, and I'll have to go on Google Earth or Google Streets or whatever, and make sure I didn't park in a fucking handicap spot or something. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right. you. Get, like you get that one of those spots where you can park a fucking school bus and you just fucking drive in head first. You're like, oh, cool, that was easy. And then you get your home and you're, out and you're like, you know, you're laying in bed yeah, and the fucking easy. yeah, the voice in your head goes, oh shit, was that a handicap spot? Why was it so easy to park in that goddamn <laughs> spot? And so I have to go look and see that part of the street on uh, Google and like, oh no, I have yep. to get dressed again. Goddamn. I think I've mentioned this before on the show, but like my buddy used to live, he lived in Northeast Philly in uh, Gillespie Street down in, uh, off of Cotman Avenue. And I learned how to parallel park at his place because we were back and forth to Philly all the time. And I was like, well, I yeah. gotta like, I gotta learn how to do it. And when Courtney and I first started dating, she couldn't believe how well I parallel park. I don't know why, like, you know, people are like, Oh, <laughs> how can you do that? I'm like, if you spend enough time in Philadelphia, trust yeah. me, you could fucking, Parallel park at 18 wheeler, pretty much anywhere outside of Broad and Chunk. You'll be able to yeah. figure it the fuck out. Dude, like, uh, yeah, it's like I could parallel park like a, like a champion. Yeah. But like you get me parking in between like painted lines, like where you pull in. I'm like always <laughs> cock, I'm always a little cockeyed. Like, it's always it, fucked me... up. I always hit the every single fucking time, man. Yeah, every time. I, I, it's like, I, I have to back out and like straighten it a little bit. I'm like, ah, oh, son of a bitch. We have the uh, back. Well, here, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Like, I cut you off. No, no. 
No, uh, like when I'll para- I'm good with parallel parking where I get this, the spots on the passenger side. If I have to parallel park in a spot where it's on the driver's side, it's always like a two or uh, like an extra, you know, attempt. Yep. Just know? one, like a half of attempt almost. Like it's not like, yeah. it's not crazy, but it's enough where you're like, oh, fuck, I've ruined my record and I should be much better than this. It's just like trying to, you know, uh, it's tr- like trying to sign your name with your hand that's not dominant. You know, <laughs> like I'm right hand dominant. It's like me trying to write something with my left hand. It's weird. Well, it's like I, Courtney, we have a back, we have a new minivan now for all of my 12 children. And they have a back, they have a back, it's a fucking offensive line here. Uh, we have a backup camera on the car. And every time I parallel park with the van, I'm like, I don't need that shit. She's like, are you sure you're going to hit that car? I was like, babe. Do I look like the kind of person that's going to hit a car with this fucking car? You've seen me, you've known each other, we've known each other for 12 years now. I've never once hit a car parallel parking, knock on wood. Not Dude, one we, fucking time. We were up in Connecticut once and, uh, well, we've been up there a few times, not just once. But, uh, we went up to hang out with, uh, Mrs. Meany's family and, uh, we were going to, we were going somewhere and there was a spot and they're like, oh, I can't fit in there. I was like, just get out and let me, just let me in. Yep. So I, so I had her mom get out of the car. I got in the passenger seat and I parked in there like, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I've been training for this my entire life. Please move. Yeah. They're called bumpers for a reason. Uh-huh. That's right. Because if you're in Philly, you better learn how to fucking parallel park quickly. We don't do that. Holy we don't do that. New York shit here. Nah. Nah. Ugh. Well, I'll tell you about my New York trip later today uh, or later in the episode if we get to it. But I wanted to just uh, quickly mention uh, at the top of the program – as we're talking about some things, uh, the TNA announcer, Don West, passed away today. Uh, he Horrible. lost his uh, his battle with brain lymphoma today. He was 59 years old. And, uh, meaning I didn't want to let this moment pass without giving you the opportunity in the floor to share any memories or good times with Mr. Don West. And you have the floor, sir. Uh, you know, Don West was a uh, sweetheart of a man. I met him a few times. Uh, and every time... You know, you talk to a guy and you felt like you knew him forever. And you kind of did because before, you know, Don West did the uh, pro- professional wrestling, you know, he was, uh, he did the, uh, like the TV auction, kind of like a QVC type thing. You know, he was, he would sell like sports memorabilia. You know, the, the whole line would be like, I got rookie cards. <laughs> you know, that, that was my Don West. And you, hey, you know what? I think even like Saturday Night Live might have done a spoof on Don West, which, you know, <clears throat> means, you know, you've done something. If, if Saturday Night Live, you know, doing a, you know, a, a parody or a spoof of you, you know, then you've done something, you know, uh, but incredible guy. I knew him from the days of, you know, uh, online, you know, I got rookie cards. And then when he got into the professional wrestling, I was like, oh, well, no. that just, it's just natural evolution, really, you know. You go from selling, uh, you know, one product to selling a different product. So he was the perfect guy to do <clears throat> to do that. But I, uh, you know, I got to know him more doing the um, Starcast events with uh, for Conrad and uh, talk about a sweetheart of a guy, man. He just talking. He, he loved life. He loved his family. Uh, and you know, uh, dude, he showed me uh, a photo of where he lived. He showed me a photo of where he lived uh, during a sm- snowfall. I was like, "Oh my god, that's like a that's like a postcard right there." It's like, "Yeah, man," and just talking about life and in general. Just what a great human being. Uh, when you heard he he was having his battle, it's just it sucks, you know. Yeah. It you know, it sucks when anybody gets sick, you know. But you know, uh, yeah, especially and and especially good person like Don West is i'll still say is because yeah his spirit will be around along with the uh the people whose lives he's, he's touched you know so uh my heart goes out to don west's family uh is you know the people who worked with him the most and uh you know wrestling lost a lost a good one we uh we sent our condolences to uh, Don West and his family during this time uh 59 years old lost his battle with a brain lymphoma today uh not Crazy. really a, not really a uh, good way to transition from that but we can go into our next topics uh and just 
try to figure out a way to move from here. Uh, we have a question in the chat box uh, for Ask Meanie, but Meanie, I feel like it is apropos to ask on this very first episode of 2023. Looking back at last year was a crazy year for wrestling. I've heard this said a lot of times on a lot of different shows, but I have to echo yeah. it. The fact that Stone Cold Steve Austin appearing in a in a WrestleMania, actually physically wrestling for the yeah. first time in 19 years, the fact that that moment didn't crack anybody's top three this yeah. year in wrestling stories is absolutely crazy to me. And uh, it just speaks to the level of sort of insanity that took place this year in our uh, in, in uh, our great sport. But I got to ask, Manny, for you, what, in your opinion, and asked by, by Pod Squad member Lucha, what is your biggest headline in wrestling? What do you think was the biggest headline, the biggest news-making story in 2022? Oh, obviously, uh, the biggest headline of 2022 was, you know, Vince announcing his retirement. You know, especially everybody, when you consider, you know, everybody was under the assumption that, you know, Vince would die in the gorilla position. You know, you know, the, that, that's where he was every week, you know, and uh, producing the TV and just being the, the boss, you know, and he was, you know, he's the guy who made you know professional wrestling what it is he made it he brought it out of the uh the doldrums and made it a part of americana you know you know pro wrestling always had always had always been like looked on looked down upon still is but um uh, you know vince made it a part of a americana in the 80s to where you could kind of like come out of the closet of your your wrestling closet and say hey I'm a professional wrestling fan and people are like yeah, me too, and not you know, be as mocked, I guess. Yeah, so to speak. But uh, you know, uh, he did a lot of good things for the business. Um, you know, a lot of people criticize things he does, which is natural in any business. You know, when people, you know, there's always back in my day or back when I was a fan, it was better. You know, you know, twenty years from now, there'll be people who said, you know, the current wrestling. Stunk and the new wrestling is good, right? But uh, Vince made it possible for a lot of wrestlers to uh, not only make money but have alternative revenue streams, whether it was merchandising, t shirts, posters, video games, all that good stuff. And uh, you know, a lot of people try to do what Vince did and failed. You know, AWA tried to go national, world class tried to go national, they're you know. Uh, the Crockett's were on TBS and it's all been written and done. But, um, the fact that, you know, with all that said, and you think he was going to let be in wrestling until he died. And, uh, of course, you know, his, his hand was kind of forced, you know, with, uh, other circumstances. But the fact that, you know, he, he said, you know what? Fuck it. All right. Let's call it a day and, uh, say he's going to retire. To me, that was the biggest headline of uh 2022 you know by you know a good margin you know because it, it, the day you you thought would never came had come and just in a tweet there was no ceremony no nothing just straight up yeah you know what <sighs> i think i'll call it a day you yeah. know and you know do the mr rogers change your shoes change the jacket walk out the door kind of thing just that that blew my mind no, I agree. I'm looking up the actual date of the retirement because I remember seeing it. Like I remember hearing buzz about what was happening. It was July 22nd or July 21st. I'm trying to find the exact tweet. Um, but I remember hearing about the, you know, the accusations and everything else that was happening. And uh, yeah, here it is. This is from July 22nd. And for it to just be like, okay, that's it. I'm done. You know, I'm wiping my hands and, and calling it a day. Like it just felt very anticlimactic, right? Yeah. For somebody who is as like, we talked about a couple weeks ago with like somebody like Gigi Allen, right? His death was yeah. very anticlimactic. Um, yeah. Vince McMahon retiring felt very anticlimactic. And don't get me wrong. Like none of, like I'm not discounting any of the, I'm not talking about any of the accusations or anything like that. I'm just mean the, the way in which he stepped down was like, oh, that's it. Like that seems crazy, right? 
Well, dude, when you figured the things he's faced in his life and have has fought and overcome and never back, like he faced going to prison with the steroid trial. Right, right. And, and fought, you know, so it's, and still was, you know, doing things from the, but then again, you know, WWE wasn't a publicly traded company back then too. So different, that. different times. Yeah. Yeah. D- yeah. There's a, there's a lot of times where I got to say, th- I say things and I have to remind myself. Yeah. Well, the company was privately owned back then and they didn't have to answer to shareholders. So, you know, and that's why a lot of people are like, well, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. They weren't, uh, uh they weren't, they were a private company then. So, right. and now, you know, uh, Supposed rumors that he wants to come back, which legally I don't think he can. You know, with uh, right. the investigations going on, I don't, I don't think he can. You know, I, there's a lot of things I want. You know, I want to win no Powerball and you know, and, and, and the, uh, the, the the whatever the other fucking lottery is that's up to like a couple hundred million. I'd love to win that. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, right? Uh, you right. Know, so, you know, uh, if he wants to come back, I, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does, but um, yeah, we're good. Yep, we're good. We'll we'll move on from him. I think for me, like I was thinking about it, I was kind of reflecting this year. The biggest stories for me, you know, obviously yes. if we count if we count Vince at number one, because really nothing is. I mean, and we've talked about we we've litigated this at nauseum, but like nothing, nothing in this year, last year, the year before, or even in the next three to five years is really going to have the impact and you know long lasting ramifications as Vince McMahon retiring. I mean, that's, that is massive on a scale that I don't think we will see before we've seen before or even after. So, yeah. uh, but I think for me, and then also Vanessa is here and just pointed out that the uh, mega millions currently stands at uh, 685 million as of today, Friday, Hello, Vanessa, Friday, December but- 30th. So if we win, well, a lot more time to record pal. Yeah, well, dude, if I win, nobody will fucking know. Going I, off the grid, you'll hear one final show with just me sitting here for 10 minutes trying to be like, where the fuck is me? No, no, no. I've I've watched that E! True Hollywood story on people who won the fucking lottery. You know? And like, yeah, I'm going to do that shit anonymously. And uh, I'll do the good fellas thing. Don't buy anything big right away. You know, just kind of yeah. just like, all right, okay, cool. You know, and just... Try to live life as normal as possible. That, with- they say that you should spend 10% of your winnings in order to get that like spend bug out of your system. That's what they say. Yeah. So let's and just g- say for exa- shits and giggles, meaning let's do some mathematics here on the show, on the program today. So we're looking at 600, <clears throat> excuse me, yes. 685 million. So let's just say you're going to lose about half of that in taxes, right? So you're looking at, Three hundred and forty-two million. Okay, just round number. Ten per ten percent of that is thirty-four point two million dollars. Thirty-four point three, if you're rounding up. Fucking hell, man! What kind of damage could I do with thirty-four million (laughs) dollars? And okay, here's a question: Would you take the lump sum or would you take the annuity? Take the lump sum. Really? Yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, I would. I don't know. I, would, I think I would take the annuity just because I always hear of people blowing through it and then sh- everything's gone. Where it's like if you take the annuity, you're kind of protecting yourself from yourself. Where, yeah, I guess I could see that, but then I would need to know how much the annuity was for. Is it monthly? Is it yearly? Is it a lump sum during the year? Like, what are the what are the metrics on that? Right, but uh. With the annuity, I think they give you more. If you take the lump sum, they take out a even a bigger cut. Right. Like you get even less with the, the lump sum. Yeah, maybe. Whereas if you took I, the so if you took the annuity, you would get more money. You know, I'm gonna throw you up know? a poll on Twitter right or uh Twitter on Monday morning. <laughs> We're gonna see what you would what you would do here just to, to see what you say. Don't forget to follow us at Mind of the Meaning and you can see we'll get the results. And and what's worse, you know, three hundred something million you get what thirty million a year, yeah, you know. There, there, there would be a list of people like I would hook up, you know, right? Just like, you know, family, like you know, uh, you know, put some money away and hide it from other people, and then 
you know, when the time's right, let them know it's there, you yeah. know, it's stuff like yeah. that. But, uh, yeah, I definitely have a list of people I'd, I'd hook up, you know, friend, friend wise, family wise and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I would take the annuity just to protect myself from myself and also protect myself from like, if somebody fucking tried to rob me, you that's know? true. Yeah. Imagine, imagine you, you win 300 something million and somebody fucking sneaks into the, fuck your bank account and steals all, all your money and transfers it or whatever. Just, I'd be like, holy shit. All right. Well, uh, let me, uh, work on my resume. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, listen, I don't have to, I don't have to think about that. I know what that, that was like. And I had about a fucking 64th of that amount in my bank account that they took. Now I kind of feel like a dick for saying that. Because <laughs> no, dude, I, didn't, no, you know, no, I didn't even like that. No, I, no, no. I didn't even put those. No, I yeah. didn't put. I didn't even put two and two together. Oh, dude, you didn't. I am not. It's no. I just. I was laughing because I'm like, oh no, I could definitely tell you what that's like. I know what it was like when they took like it was like eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars out of the account right before Christmas. I couldn't imagine somebody hardwiring thirty million out of my account like that. You know what I mean? Like that is like stat. Yeah. Or, if, or actually, what you're saying though is like if they took the lump sum, that's three hundred and forty-two million dollars. Somebody could snag right out of your account. Fuck that, man. Yeah, no, I think yeah, you're right. You I think, I think you've converted me, sir. Yeah, if you, you get fucked over in that, you know, first year, there, there's always that parachute of, oh, okay, well, I got another 30 million coming next year. I think I can, I think I can hold out, you know? Yeah, I think whatever. I can, I think I can make this work for another couple of Yeah, whatever the breakdown is per year. Yeah. Yeah. Get that, get that annuity, you know, take some out, hide it. Yeah. You know, put in some uh, interest earning things for, you know, other people, you know, now, just to, you know, just to uh, look out for others. And listen too, man. I mean, if I, if I, you know, if I get 30 million that first year, I'll be almost halfway through my student loans after I pay it off with <laughs> my 30 million. <laughs> so maybe within the first like three and a half years of those payments, I'll be done with it. But uh, yeah. No, let's. Uh, I want to run down a couple more stories uh, from this past crazy year. I would say, you know, the uh, the top five, if you were counting Vince, I would say number five was the uh, the Rumble fiasco with Mr. Shane McMahon uh, and him being released from the company. Yeah, I, I really don't know the whole situation with that. Was he booking it, rebooking it? Or? Yeah. So apparently, he he was like tasked with booking the Rumble, and he made a lot of last minute changes, including being la the one of the last three in the ring with Brock. And uh, I can't remember who the third one was. It was Drew. And God. Uh, I think it was, um, I had a lot of questions after that rumble. It was, it was panned universally panned. Uh, the men's yeah. rumble this past year. I don't, I don't believe it was very good. I love Shane McMahon, but I don't think this rumble was very good. Uh, but the yeah. rumor, the rumor and innuendo was, is that Vince fired him, let him go, sent him home. Um, it's never been confirmed though. Like it's never like, he's still an active person. I'm sure it was like, Hey dude, go cool off for a while. But again, I don't, but it was a big enough story, uh, where, you know, I would say it definitely registered on the Richter scale. Yeah. I, dude, I love Shane too. And, uh, I guess with everything else that happened, I, I kind of just slipped my mind. Yeah. With the, and, and also the you know the rumble fiasco is like the first thing of the year because it's a January right so <laughs> yeah. so much stuff had so much stuff happened after that that it was like all right yeah you know, yeah I mean oh shit oh shit that did happen you know I think maybe for me it should be an honorable honorable mention I would say number five would be uh, you know Stone Cold coming back I mean that's a huge that's a huge it's an incredible fucking moment uh, to me I, I would at least that would be in my top three. Mm. Considering, you know, um, the metrics, everything that went into his retirement and, uh, everything, uh, you know, his issues with his neck and all that stuff. The fact that, like, he almost didn't make his final match because his, you know, body was just, uh, he, he had to go to the hospital before his final match. And the fact that he made his final match and, you know, the final, his final match was with The Rock, and they had that moment where, you know, Rock pids him, and then Rock does the thing where, you know, you know, gives him his flowers in the ring right there, has a little private moment. And, uh, you, th you think that's it forever, and you're like, ah, oh, he'll never come back. The fact that he did, and it kind of like became like the worst kept, kept secret, you know, uh, it's worse than Punk's return, man. Yeah. 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 And then, um, yeah, the fact that, you know, it, it happened, you know, 
I mean, it's a dead giveaway. He's coming down for an interview segment wearing both knee pad, knee, both <laughs> knee knee braces. You know, yeah. You know? uh, but uh, yeah, that would be in my top three, like uh, Stone Cold with the uh, the return. That you know, that might be my number two behind Vince. Really. Yeah, just yeah, I could say that. Just because considering that you know, you know, his neck was so bad that he had to retire. That you know, he came back and had a, a really good match with with Kevin. You know, and Kevin was the perfect opponent. I, I had, you know, I, w- I was going into that match thinking, you know, well, Brock's the obvious draw, right? That you know, yeah. the two guys who never face off. But you know, once I w- sat there and digested, watched and digested the match with Kevin. Kevin was the perfect opponent. Absolutely, yeah. I think in that context, I I would say that that one was for me. That was there was nobody else. You know, outside of Punk, maybe this year, from what the rumor mill is saying, and of course he's training again on Instagram, uh, Mister Mister Austin, and yes. uh, you know, so it's like, why are you, why are you training? Why why yeah. are you training so hard, Steve? What's going on, man? Yeah. You, you got something planning? Um, it's up no. that vein in your that fucking vein in his bicep is bigger than most people's biceps. Yes, and I'm like, what's going on, man? He's like, oh yeah, nothing, nothing's going on. I'm like, oh, okay, sure. That's what you said last time, and then you showed up at WrestleMania and fucking had a banger of a match, dude. He, now, looks ama- he looks amazing. Yeah, dude. Uh, he's whatever he's going to do. I'm excited for. I, I feel like it's a. Not many people get this kind of opportunity to do a late stage, you know, resurgence. Maybe Sting is the only like contemporary that I can think of in his yeah. class because Sting doesn't have a contemporary right now. Like, there's no one in, in his league right now. He's the old. He's the last fucking scion from that era, right? Um, but I I love the fact that he's doing it. All right, so we have Vince, we have Stone Cold. For me, this might be controversial, meaning, and I'll, I'll pick your brain on it. Just in, in sheer volume, I'm putting Cody Rhodes returning to WWE at number three. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one, but just because, you know, uh, I mean, when you you go and help start a company, you know, with AEW. You know, uh, he left WWE because he wanted to forge his own path. He came out with the list of things he wanted to do. He did them. He uh, made a friendship with the uh, the Young Bucks and Omega and and Hangman, and they were doing the being the Elite videos. And you know, they uh, did the whole uh, all out or all in. Uh, Pay per view where they, you know they funded it with their own money and put their own 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 necks on the line to to fund that show and they did it and then that was a litmus test for AEW and then you know Tony Khan comes aboard and you know uh, they 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 create all elite wrestling and and uh, creating this buzz and all of a sudden you know a year or two into it you know. It just randomly, oh yeah, Cody. By the way, Cody Rhodes' his deal has expired. What? Yeah, like wait, what? I'm sorry, what? Excuse me. Uh, do we have like a, 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 a like a I've, not like a fact checker, but somebody just uh, a minder to look, you know, check over these contracts to at least know to renew them. You know, right. How, right. Did, how did that? How did that slip through the cracks? But uh, yeah, and then he leaves, and it's like wow. You know, it, it, it was interesting, you know, to watch how people reacted to, you know, him leaving AEW and going back to WWE. But, like, you know, the, the, his a, his return to uh, WWE was very surreal, especially considering he came back with, you know, his 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 own, the same theme, same look, the American Nightmare, the, the logo and everything, which I'm sure the uh, gimmick attorney maybe helped uh, secure for him. Uh, Probably. Shout out, to Mike, Do- shout out to Mike Dawkins, the uh, gimmick attorney. But uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, that was that. Yeah, that's a that's a, a solid, solid number three right there. I would say right after that, which I know you'll say as well, CM Punk's brawl out cro- controversy uh, at yeah. AEW's All Out, the press scrum from hell. Um, <laughs> yeah, lots of other fancy fun names for it, but no, man, I I. Uh, I can't think of another story, number four, that was as, as impactful yeah. as the CM Punk controversy. I know there's been a lot of talk about it 
and we've also discussed it as well. Uh, I'm still pretty head hard set in my views on it. Uh, how are you feeling now? A couple months removed from the CM Punk brawl out. I just wish it didn't lead to uh, if he's gone from the company. I wish it didn't lead lead to him having to leave the company. Mm. Um. You know, I get, I, I get, I understand if, you know, Tony was upset that the fact that he just did that right next to Tony and it, it kind of made Tony look bad. You know, they sang all these things right next to Tony. And, uh, I can see from that standpoint, you know, hey, man, you embarrassed me. I, we got to do something about this. Right. Right. But then, you know, everything with the brawl afterwards were, you know, it, I don't think there was a, there was no innocent party really. You know, uh, I said it before and I said it again, you know, they really put Punk in a, in a position to fail where he had him go right from the ring right to this media scrum where he's still high off the, uh, the ring, the, the adrenaline from being in the ring, being hyper uh, emotional. You go into a room where several reporters that, you know, propaganda, whatever rumor it was about him supposedly having, you know, uh, Cole Cabana let go or fired or sitting right there. And you come in the ring, you're, you're emotional, you're a high on adrenaline. And they see these people who have been, you know, saying these things about you, whether they're true or false, who knows, but I can understand, you know, why punk would, you know, go away, go that route. So if they had just let it go, and let him cool down and make him maybe have him be the last one to do the media scrum. Things might have, you know, been handled differently, in my opinion. But uh, he st- he should still be there, you know. Uh, just 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 airing a grievance uh, really shouldn't be grounds for dismissal. You know, people have, you know, it's. It, it, just, you know, publicly saying, you know, you're not happy with the way things are being run isn't necessarily a bad thing. The way it was done, maybe. But like I said, if he had if he had done it later, I think the result might have been a little bit different. Well, right. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty firm on, on where I stand with this now, you know, six, however many months later. You know, I mean, it's like, look, like, uh, I don't necessarily disagree from a place of fact. I feel like where punk was coming from, right? Mm -hmm. He has the, he has the right to air out his grievances, you know, and, and, and say things and defend himself. If that's what's happening from a corporate standpoint, because that's part of where my brain goes with this kind of thing. Like it was super unprofessional um, and definitely should have been at the very least suspended for a period of time. You know what right. I mean? Like, I think that would have been an appropriate, because again, if somebody does that kind of shit at my work, I write them up. You know, like, bro, you can't, like, I appreciate the feedback and I appreciate you bringing, like, but you can't, there's ways to do this kind of stuff, right? Right. You're damaging the business by doing it this way instead of approaching it in a different way. Uh, but again, based on what has is out there, like you said, I mean, it, and what we talked about, like, there's not, I don't disagree or dispute any of those things. The only issue that I really take with this whole thing from a corporate standpoint is regardless of who started the fight, regardless of who did what in that room, the Young Bucks and, and Kenny Omega should not be EVPs in that company anymore. I'm sorry. I know that might be a uh, – but but hear me out for a second. Right. If you will. And I know we've sort of briefly yeah. kind of baseline discussed this before. Um, that's a corporate nightmare. That is a PR nightmare what happened at that fucking event. And right. Tony should have taken control and said, you guys are out. We can't like, I appreciate what you guys do for the company, but you guys like, you, we I have to strip you these titles. Regardless of who threw the first punch, you guys approached him in a room after this. You know what I mean? Like, that, like it, it's from again. And that's just strictly me from a business standpoint. Right. Wrestling. I have no context on what, you know, I, I just, I, that's the way I approach this. So how do you feel? about that that commentary or that thought that line of thought well it's definitely i mean and, and sometimes you, you almost forget you know that they are evps which when, when you take on that responsibility you take on a, a a different set of standards where you you have to 
be mindful of your actions. You know, there's, you're not one of the boys anymore. Right. You know, so, and almost like if, if you know, if I was in that company, I was an EVP and a wrestler, I would just have to step, step away from, almost step away from in-ring. Yeah. Actions, you know, just to focus on the business of being an EVP behind the scenes. You know, if, if you're going to be, EV, be, if you're going to be a wrestler and still be an EVP, you're going to, you know, one thing, one, one, one of those things is going to take precedent over the other, you know? Right. right. Kind, of, kind of like when if somebody becomes the booker, they kind of have to pull away from being in ring town so they can, you know, focus on, you know, the storylines and stuff like that. So on top of doing the stuff they already have to do in the ring. So and the fact that they, you know, approached him and went to, you know, went to him, you know, instead of maybe waiting until, you know, the following week where cooler heads would have prevailed, it only escalated the thing. So the fact that they were employees of a, of a, of a corporation approaching an employee that led to a brawl. I mean, that's, that's bad luck. Like a physical altercation, a yeah. physical altercation with an employee, potentially yeah. someone that punk reports to. Right. You know, and again, everyone can decide how they feel about it. You can be pro elite. You can be pro punk. I don't care. But I'm saying from a business standpoint, from purely a corporate standpoint, something larger should have been done to prove a point. Because as the boss, yeah. you're the boss of the company, man. You're you're the, you're the head honcho. You're the big cheese. You got it. You got to set precedent. And now yeah. you've. I feel like you've set precedent has been sent in the wrong direction. Instead of what, like, look, we're we're friends. You know, we do this business together. But like, this is this is where the buck stops right here, my desk, mm. and I can't allow this type of behavior. But. Remains to be seen. Lucha has uh, indicated in the group chat here that the dirt sheets, the peripheral news media, is reporting that CM Punk wants to come back to AEW. And right before we came on to record, I, I saw a headline that said, you know, Meltzer reported that all the quote unquote top guys in AEW made sure that, you know, Punk's never coming back. So who knows? You know. Consider the source, sir. Uh, yeah. I, I'll believe it when, when I see it. Um, CM Punk also apparently appeared on Dax Harwood's podcast, uh, and, uh, Dax pleaded for the four of them to, uh, work out the event for wrestling's sake, or he commented rather. Yeah. I don't know if he appeared cause I, I, I watched the, uh, I'm a, I'm a member of the ad free community. I watched the, uh, debut episode of Dax's podcast and they talked about CM Punk. Punk was the topic, but Punk wasn't on the podcast, but they had talked about it and Dax said, you know, he had wished, you know, I mean, if they were smart, they make make money with the business, yeah, with this thing, you know, me and JBL had our issue, but we got together and talked out like men and fucking went in the ring and that made a storyline out of a real life situation. And 20 years later, you still have heat. So, you know, things can, <laughs> things can happen, man. No, I'm just kidding. I wish I had one yeah. of those burr, 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 buttons. No, uh, no, I mean, it can, anything is possible. I'm sure whatever is going to be, the wrestling gods will grace us at some point with, uh, uh on, on this one. Yes, that's the one I need for when we yeah. make JBL references because it's so obnoxious. We need to have yeah. something equally to set it off. Yes. Because if I hear one more person out. ask you in, par in person, oh, what about JBL? Glad he's not here. Yeah. Guys, guys, it's fine. They're homies. Yeah. It's cool, <laughs> y'all. It's cool, I promise. I saw it. Uh, yes. I would say the number five uh, story then, for me anyway, and for my money, and you could disagree and we can, we can litigate this, outside of Bray Wyatt, outside of Jeff Hardy, outside of MJF, which all happened this year, Johnny Knoxville. I would say my, my number five story would be Sasha Banks and Naomi walking out of WWE. Just based on news headlines and the amount of traffic and, and, and vitriol that that, that that brought up. What do you think, Meanie? What's your, uh, what's your take on number five? Um, what were the other uh, things you did? I, th I would so, think... I would think the MJF thing. 
So we have a big number five. MJF is on that could be on that list is that whole drama uh, with him potentially walking out. Big E broke his neck this year. Um, yeah. Johnny Knoxville's yeah. appearance at WrestleMania. Uh, we're talking about also what was the other ones I just mentioned? Uh, Bray Wyatt returning and the massive wave of returns uh, when uh, Papa H took over creative and then Jeff Hardy's situation being released from WWE working at AEW and then being arrested again. Um, that those would be, you know, Bray Wyatt was a massive fucking return though. I mean, that was, yeah, but, um, uh, yeah, but it's, 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 it feels like the th- it's cooled down a little bit. I feel like, and you know what? I was thinking about that too, with some of the different guys like hit row, carrying cross friend of the show. Um, I wonder also though, and, and I, this might be something we can sort of tie up before we get to ask Meanie. Yeah. I think right now WWE has a Roman Reigns problem. And what I mean by that is the fact that there's so many different people saying so many different things about what's going to happen at the Rumble. What's going to happen at WrestleMania? Is it going to be Cody Rhodes that's going to dethrone the tribal chief? Is right. it going to be The Rock showing up in number 30 and winning the Rumble? You know, like, what's the story? Is it Seth Rollins right. that's going to go into the, you know, winning the money in the bank briefcase? It'll be Austin Theory again, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Um, I think there's no real clear path on how to get around the tribal chief situation. And I don't know where they go from here. So I think a lot of these guys cooled off Bray Wyatt and then cool off. I use it broadly, right? But I think like Bray Wyatt's storyline is a little stagnant. LA Knight is a little stagnant. Karrion Cross for sure has become stagnant. And that's only because I feel like Hunter's got big plans for them. But they can't really move him into the main event picture until the Roman Reigns storyline is and the bloodline is is tied up. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't know if they necessarily have a a Rome, Roman Reigns pro- problem. Uh, dude, I remember years ago when uh, Brock won the world title, and people were like, "What to do that? What to do that for? Who who's going to fit?" Who's, who can they put in there? Possibly put in there with Brock with, to to fight him. It's like, well, that's why you got to watch and find out, right? Right. No, <laughs> that makes sense. It's, it's not like uh, okay, uh, okay, everybody at home. Uh, Brock Lesnar is now our champion. This is what we're planning on doing with him. Uh, they ain't gonna let you know. They want you to watch to see what happens. You know. So you know, uh, you know, Roman's been dual champion for a while now. And uh, people were wondering what they were going to do. But that's the whole purpose of watching is to, to see what they do. You know, you know, as, as smart as everybody thinks they are to the wrestling business, it's WWE's job to, uh, you know, keep people interested, even though they think they know what they think they know, which they don't know until they say it, you know. Yeah. So uh, I don't think, I mean, it's, he, he's the best thing going on. In wrestling right now, Roman Reigns and the Bloodline is the best thing going on in professional wrestling right now. You know, people are talking about it. It's, it's intriguing. And there's great mic work. There's layers and layers of stories between, you know, is Jimmy going to turn? Uh, you know, uh, where where was uh, Sammy's allegiance? And I think there's like a down low solo thing going on where, you know, he's celebrating... He's not celebrating with certain people, but he's celebrating with other people, you know, kind of thing. So there's so many different yeah. layers to it, you know. But, uh, yeah, I don't think they have a, a Roman problem. I think Romans and the bloodline are, like, the best thing going on in wrestling. Uh, let me – I should quantify this a little bit. When I say they have a Roman Reigns problem, what I mean is what are they going to do with both belts, right? Oh, you know right, right, yeah, right. So I mean, like, how are you going to establish new stars? I don't necessarily think that Cross is out of the picture. I think with Cross, I think, again, like, they kind of fucked his gimmick up when they brought him in the last time with the Roman helmet and all that bullshit. Yeah. And he's been out of the game for a while. He's one of Hunter's guys. He's trying to reestablish him in, in the company. Uh, I think you just got to give it time. I think that for him specifically, I think you have to give it time. Um but I don't necessarily know. I think, again, like, you know, uh, for me, and uh, I feel like Cody should be the guy and Cody should be this year. Um, but I'm curious to see what happens with The Rock, too. So I guess time will tell. But 
I think that could be a segment of why they're letting things play out a little bit more. Maybe they're just trying to get through the WrestleMania hump with The Rock, and then they can start moving guys like Bray, building the stories with Bray and Cross and L. You know what I mean? Like, because there's still a huge Braun Strowman's back. You know, like there's a large segment of people that that Roman still has the potential to work with and have some yeah. really great programs. You know, I mean, Cross and Roman will be great. The L.A. Knight and Roman, that might work alone, is going to be fucking insane. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree. I don't necessarily, I don't uh, dispute any of those points. But Meanie, as a dispute or actually rather a question. Yeah, of course. If I may. Hey, friends, this episode of Mind of the Meanie is brought to you by our favorite producers of ball trimmers, Manscaped. The global leaders in below the waist grooming are leaving 2022 with brand new products, the Persevere Cologne and Persevere Body Wash. 2023 is the year to up your hygiene game and smell amazing. And Manscaped wants to help you do that with this special offer. Use the promo code MINDMEANIE for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Take the leap into the new year and join the 7 million men who already trust Manscaped. And Meanie, I know I trust Manscaped, but let's talk about what was the highlight of 2022 for you and what are you looking forward to in 2023? Oh, well, I'll tell you, man. Uh, Manscaped has uh, kept Meany up uh, on the up and up when it comes to uh, looking and smelling good for uh, Mrs. Meany. Uh, I love the Persevere Body Wash. I love the Persevere Cologne. Uh, all their products have been tip top, all the way from you know, the foot spray to you know uh, to everything so uh when it comes to uh you know meanie looking his finest manscape has done the job and doing the job it is for me here as well at the barnard home for wayward and troubled youth courtney uh, absolutely loves the new look on little john on the east side boys so i can't complain that has definitely been the highlight all the way from the tippy top down to my thigh slappers 2023 is on its way and the last thing you want is to be the guy with pubes getting in the way of making it your best yet the manscape lawnmower 4.0 is the leader of the performance pack Package 4.0, or as I call it, the perfect package for my package, Meanie. Manscaped engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and an incredibly comfortable grooming experience. This new year, shave off those loose pines. Shave those loose pines off of your wood with the best tool for the job, the Signature Lawnmower 4.0. Uh, it's here to take down every pube in its path. Uh, also, talk about feeling clean and uh, smelling good as well. The new purse of your body wash from Manscaped solves all three of those problems. For the perfect addition to your daily grooming room team, but in the shower, the body wash has a light woodsy scent and is infused with aloe vera and sea salt to keep your skin feeling clean, nice, and moisturized. The new purse of your cologne is like the body wash with a light woodsy scent that answers the call of the wild while leaving you smelling like a man forged from the earth. And Meanie, we're not talking about smelling like a man after you come out of the wrestling ring. We're talking about clean, <laughs> fresh, and well and good. It's also cruelty free, Meanie, which is amazing. It's dye free paraben free and vegan so you know you're in the right hands while smelling right me what's that promo code again one more time you can use code mind me for getting 20 percent off plus free shipping that's promo code mind meanie for 20 percent off plus free shipping at manscape.com 2023 it's on the way the woods are here and smell amazing are you ready to jump in and join us with Manscaped again, 20% off plus free shipping by using the promo code MindMeanie at Manscaped.com. Happy New Year to your balls, and we thank you. We thank Manscaped for sponsoring the program. I have a question for you, sir. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I missed my cue. Would you like to ask Meanie? I would love to. Ask me something. Don't forget, friends, to tweet us your <laughs> questions at Mind of the Meanie using the hashtag Ask Meanie, and we will ask them, potentially ask them on the program. Uh, let's pull up our questions here. Uh, we asked Lucha's question from the pod squad, uh, and we are here. We go. Mark and Trident wants to know let's get hypothetical. If the playoffs started now in the NFL, who would you want Philadelphia to face? Well, hopefully, uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm recording this after the fact, but hopefully uh, the Eagles will have beaten the Saints this weekend and clinched the number one. A, 
cl- clinched the NFC East. B clinched uh, the f- number one seed, which means they would have a bye mm. in the uh, the playoffs. Which uh, it'd be interesting to see what the pairings are. Uh, somebody brought up an interesting fact that uh, now that Carson Wentz is now with the Commanders, you know, the quarterback of the Commanders again over Taylor Heineke. That uh, there's a possibility that uh, if they make a pass the first round, they could face the Eagles in Philly, uh, which you know the, we we kind of got robbed of that Carson Wentz uh, return to Philly uh, with the 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 last Redskins uh, appearance. So um, who would I like? I don't know. I mean, the Forty ers are got a, an amazing defense and uh, Brock Purdy. Is uh, doing okay, mm. you know, as their quarterback. But uh, am I, and, and there's a good chance that the rest of the NFC East could be in the playoffs. And I would kind of want to steer away, way, st- steer away from any other NFC East team, just for the fact that it's hard to, you know, beat a team. You know, well, it's hard to beat a team three times. And so far, the Eagles have split with the uh, the the Commanders and have split with the Cowboys. They haven't played the Giants yet, which is the last game of the season. So, you know, uh, I would have to go with the 49ers for now. If they if they get the if they get the the bye and the first round bye, and they face whoever you know wins the first round, if the 49ers were to advance. I would like to see the uh, the Eagles take on the 49ers in the uh, the, the the their first playoff uh, thing because I th- I think it would be hard to you know face another NFC East team because of the, just the familiarity that they're that, that's already there in the game planning and stuff like that. So you face a 49 you face a 49ers team that really hasn't seen anything the Eagles have done and the Eagles really haven't seen anything they've done. So it would be like a like an even playing field, so to speak. Honestly, that was going to be my answer too. Was uh, was San Francisco? So I think I'm going to go with that one. Uh, that yeah. In- it, yeah, it sounds crazy given you know how scary good their defense is, but I think uh, our offense could you know pair well with their defense, and uh, I think our defense can. You know, farewell against their offense. How much of it do you think depends on uh, on Jalen Hurts being at 100% when he comes back? Oh, he'll be 100%. He was practicing this week. Mm. Uh, he's been listed as doubtful right. for Sunday, so it'll be Minshew Mania again this week. And not for nothing, Min- Gardner, Gardner Minshew could have easily won the, the Cowboys game. They lost, but, you know, when you turn the ball over four times, yeah. you know, you know the, the, the two games the Eagles lost this year is – where they had the most turnovers. So, and you're giving up the ball, you're losing the ball in, you know, your own territory. So you're giving people short fields. So, right. Uh, Hertz will be back for the playoffs. No, the only thing I worry about is Hertz being away for so long that, you know, is he going to be a little rusty? It'll be, it'll be like a good five weeks from the Chicago game to the first round of the play. If they get to buy, mm. you know, I'm trying to be a realist here. Uh, if they get to buy, you know, they skip that first round of playoffs. Could be a good five weeks before Hertz has, has seen some, you know, live rounds, right? In the in the playoffs, so uh, he'll he'll physically be ready. Well, it's just I'm just worried about it. Will there be a rust factor? Yeah, I think too. And I know you know talked a little bit about this, but I think the Eagles' defense, you know, they looked a little flat recently. So I'm, I mean, really, it's going to come down to them. So I think between that and that they can do it, they can pull it off. It's great, but let's go. Got to figure it out, guys. They look, oh, they look a little flat. They, they they've had the injury bug. CJ uh, has been out. Uh, Gardner, I'm not a what's his name Chauncey Chauncey mm. Gardner has been out, but with the uh, lacerated kidney. Oof. So, but he's uh, they're they're saying he's pretty close to coming back. So, if we get him back for and we just lost Avante Maddox, he, he he just came back. And then went out with a, a broken toe in the Dallas game, so mm. that kind of hurt. But uh, you know, um, 
you know, some of the other guys have been stepping up, uh, but yeah, once they, I think once they get Chauncey back on defense, you know, uh, Lane's hurt with a, an ab tear, abdominal tear. So he, he, they're resting him for the rest of the season until the playoffs. So hopefully they get this first round by so everybody can heal up and come back, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, stronger. I mean, everybody's going to be, everybody's still banged up, but, you know, to be a little bit less banged up and a little bit rested, you know, well, you know, we'll see. Morgan Dryden had a second question out of the back body drop, the atomic drop or the airplane spin, which, if any of these moves should be used again on a more regular basis in matches. So what, what is back body drop, atomic drop? And the airplane spin. I mean, the airplane spin's kind of legit, you know? Yeah. You know, as far as, you know, a maneuver, you know, with the spinning and then, you know, the fire, it's a fireman's carry, you know? Uh, I mean, I'd love to see the back. You know what? It's like the backdrop is like the most unnerving bump to take. Really? Uh, yeah, it's, just, it's, like I took it, and, you know, when I was training with Al, and uh, but I never bothered to do it again because it's just the timing on it and just the trust factor of going up that high and making sure you you get over. It's like, Ugh. you know, just yeah. uh, I I would love to see the backdrop come back. You know, uh, I would love to see a lot of things come back. You know, it just uh, I hate that the fact that they call them rest holds. Yeah, it's, because you're not really resting. Because if you're you're working it right, it should be taking just you know watch Randy Orton work a chin lock. He's physically moving around and working that chin lock, and the guy you know selling it should be you know trying to fight out of it. You know, if somebody's really got you in the chin lock, but um, yeah, just uh, yeah, definitely a backdrop. Nobody really does the backdrop anymore, and. You know, there's a lot of guys who took unique backdrops as well. You know, just right. You know, if you, there's a way to, to, to switch it up a little bit, yeah, I would definitely have to say the, the backdrop, the atomic drop is interesting. But uh, you know, if you sell it a certain way, it could, there could be a little bit. There's almost a little bit too much daylight when giving it, right? You know, yeah, you know, with the you know, making sure the uh, the this you know the butt hits the knee and stuff like that. So definitely, definitely the backdrop. Meanie, I want to thank you for your time as always uh, on this incredible program, sir. We have a great time. I love asking you these questions. Please don't forget to tweet them at us using the hashtag ask Meanie, and we will ask them on the program. But Meanie, I have another question for you. Yeah, of course. Where can folks (laughs) find you on your social media? If you would like to follow the Blue Meanie on all forms of social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Mastodon, uh, at Blue Meanie, BWO, uh, on all forms of social media. If you would like to support the Blue Meanie, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Blue Meanie. If you would like to support Mind of the Meanie, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Mind of the Meanie. Also, there's Colin Elbro. The wrestling brand. Go to collarandelbowbrand.com. Use coupon code MEANIE. Save 10% on all your purchases. But you can also go to collarandelbowbrand.com and use promo code MIND to help support Mind and the Meanie as well. Uh, MadcatBeardCare.com. My boy Josh Thornton is doing an amazing job over there at MadcatBeardCare.com. Go over there and get yourself some blue spruce. Uh, every dollar spent over at madcatbeercare.com goes to take care of, goes to take care of feral cats. Uh, Josh rounds them up, takes them to the vet and, uh, on his own accord and, uh, helps him, uh, he heals them back to a hundred percent. So, uh, if you're a cat lover like myself, go to madcatbeercare.com. Uh, shout out to my boy Jim Nilsson over at glaciersofice.com. Uh, Jim. Made a three of three only handmade custom BWO Air Jordan 1 sneakers for Stevie Nova and myself. Each pair of sneakers takes Jim 50 hours per pair to make. And if you want to see how Jim does it, 
follow him on social media, go to at G-O-I Kicks on all forms of social media. You can see a video and still photos. He does amazing work over there. Uh, cameo.com slash Blue Meanie BWO for birthdays, holidays, and well wishes. Uh, it's never too late to get in there at uh, cameo.com slash Blue Meanie BWO and request a video, especially with the new year coming along. Uh, uh, let's have a little bit of fun. and Don't be too mean. And uh, let's have some fun over there at cameo.com slash blue mini bw but most importantly mr bernard where can we find you well i appreciate that sir thank you very much you can find me on twitter and instagram twitter at least for now hopefully through the weekend uh, and on mastodon at this is goober yes that's my handle no i'm not changing it it's a brand pal so go check me out there you can also check out my second program foundation radio by going to foundationradio.net and checking out everything in the archive got a lot of fun interviews coming up this year uh, hopefully I'll get some adrenaline pumped into my veins for a, a another year this year. That's an inside joke for you, Meanie. Uh, we're also looking at, uh, you can go to the Feinberg Method. Go to the FeinbergMethod.com right now. Use promo code Goober and get up to 20% off of your purchase. Brad is my personal trainer, uh, not just with uh, physical wellness, but also with mental wellness as well. Uh, he has changed my life and he will change yours as well. So go to the FeinbergMethod.com. Go to patreon.com slash mind of the meanie. Sign up today and become a member of our pod squad. Uh, go to pro wrestling tees.com and, uh, uh, or pro wrestling tees.com slash mind of the meanie and pick up a home to support or Jesus Christ. I'm going to try the whole fucking thing again, meanie. <laughs> Throw it out the fucking window, man. <laughs> Woo, man. First day with a new mouth. Pro yes. wrestling tees.com slash mind of the meanie. Pick up a shirt and keep the lights on here at Casa de Mini and the Barnard Home for Wayward and Troubled Youth. Uh, thank you very much. I finally got my way through that sentence. Let's give us all a round of applause here. Uh, and go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Foundation Radio. <laughs> He's doing it for you. can see his round of applause if you're joining us on Patreon. Uh, go to yes. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Foundation Radio. Pick up a shirt there and support the show. Uh, thank you again to our sponsors, Manscaped. Don't forget, Mind Mini is the promo code for 20% off plus free shipping pod squad thank you again for joining us each and every week as we record this wonderful program of ours for the blue meanie i am adam bernard join us again each and every week as we take a trip to the mind This episode of Mind of the Meanie was recorded and produced by Adam Barnard and was engineered by Carl Pinnell. Additional production and narration provided by Sam Krefs. Our executive producers are Josh Chernoff, Adam Barnard, and the Blue Meanie. Our opening theme is performed by the Swamp Candles. Our closing theme is performed by Chikara. The show contains original music produced by Enrichment. Get additional bonus content by becoming our patron on Patreon at patreon.com slash mindofthemeanie. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram at mindofthemeanie. This has been a Butts Carlton Media Production in conjunction with the MLW Radio Network. Butts Carlton Proprietor. Blue, 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 blue world order. That was Blue Meanie's brain out. The world of NLW.